Hey guys, this is Matt with Shop Easy Go, and today I'm going to show you installation of a lift kit on gas and electric TXT. This kit's going to give your car more ground clearance for all road use. It's going to allow you to utilize larger wheels and tires and give your car a more aggressive look. The premium lift kit includes one tie rod, one lifted axle weldment, two spindle assemblies left hand and right hand, two lift bracket weldments, two shock plate mounting brackets, one hardware kit, and two kingpin tubes. To begin installation, we're going to install the front axle components. Refer to the installation instructions for proper lifting points. When lifting your vehicle, make sure the key is turned to the all position and as always wear proper hand and eye protection. Now that we have our vehicle lifted, you can begin removing the wheels. The first step to removing your front axle assembly is to remove the cotter pin from the ball joint. Once this is done, remove the castle nut. Using a ball joint splitter, remove the ball joint from the passenger side spindle. With the ball joint now removed, you can remove the lower portion of your left and right shock. Use a 9 16 wrench and turn the shock in a counterclockwise motion to remove. Our next step is to remove the three nuts securing the rack and pinion to the axle assembly. When you remove the rack and pinion, you can rest it on the front rear springs. Next, remove your axle from your spring plate. At this point, you want to make a note of the three and a half inch long bolt in the front driver side of the spring plate. Note this location and retain for later installation. Now remove the axle assembly. Now we're going to install a new front axle weldment. The next step is to install a new washer and bushing to your front shock, noting the orientation of your rubber bushing. With our new axle in place, we can begin installation of our leaf spring and leaf spring plates. Refer to the illustrations and the instructions for proper bolt orientation. The passenger side bolts are installed facing down for proper clearance. With our spring plates now installed, we can begin reinstalling our rack and pinion using two existing spacers and one new spacer. Be sure to tighten all hardware to 35 to 50 foot-pounds of torque. Now with our new front axle installed, you want to make sure that the front axle is in line with the frame. To do this, refer to the illustration and the instructions to make sure the axle is aligned properly. With our axle now aligned, we're going to install the driver and passenger side spindles. With new spindle in place, reinstall the ball joint and castellated nut. Tighten the castle nut to 36 foot-pounds of torque and then turn as needed to insert the new cotter pin. The next step is to install the tie rod. We're going to install this and then once the vehicle is on the ground, make any final adjustments.
When installing the tie rod, be sure to hold the lower portion with 11 16 wrench. With the front of the vehicle installed, we can now begin installation of the rear. We have our rear wheels removed. Now we're going to disconnect the brake cable from the rear axle assembly. The first step is to remove the rear pin from the brake cable. Once this is done, remove the C-clip and slide the brake cable from the assembly. Once this process is finished, repeat the same steps for the opposite side. We're now going to disconnect the rear axle assembly from the leaf springs by removing the four U-bolts. Before doing so, make sure you fully support the axle. To remove the nuts on the U-bolt, use a 9 16 inch socket. With our U-bolts removed, we can now remove the lower shock absorber hardware. Now that we have our axle disconnected from our leaf springs, we can now remove the rear leaf spring mounting hardware and the front mounting hardware to remove the leaf spring. To remove the front leaf spring mounting hardware, you use a 9 16 wrench and a 3 quarter inch socket. Your next step in the installation is to install your new lift brackets directly on top of your axle. Install the leaf spring in reverse order of removal. With our leaf springs now installed, we're going to lower the vehicle slightly so that the pins on the leaf springs get inserted into the center hole on our lifting block. Now we're going to install our new shock mounting plate on top of our leaf springs. Make sure you center the pin on top of the leaf spring to the hole in the center of the shock mounting plate. And then we're now going to insert four bolts through our lifting plate, through our leaf springs, and our new shock mounting plate. Secure these with nut and washer. Your kit also includes new shock washers and bushings, so we're going to install those next. Now that we have our first side complete, we're going to repeat the same steps for the opposite side. If installing your lift kit on a gasoline vehicle, you're going to locate the two axle locator pins on both sides of your axle and make sure these are ground down to one half inch or less so when you install your lifting blocks, it does not interfere with your leaf spring mounting. Here on this side, we have our lifting blocks, our leaf springs, and our shock absorber mounting plates installed using two U-bolts. Now that we have our lift components installed, all we have to do is reinstall our brake cable and our wheels and we can lower the vehicle. Now that the lift kit is installed and the vehicle is on the ground, the final step is to adjust the toe according to the manufacturer's specifications.